What is going on my reefing fam? March here, this is Fragbox TV. Okay, today we are gonna do a Fragbox visit video. You have to watch this one. We're gonna go check out an amazing, amazing reef aquarium. It's big, it's 360 gallons. It measures eight feet by three feet deep and two feet tall. It's using currently my favorite lights on the market as of 2023, which are the Neptune Sky. It's the first time I'm seeing a tank on this size being lit by these. The corals look incredible. It's got full automation top to bottom, full Neptune apex. I'm going to give you a full walkthrough of the system, how it was built, and the customer is actually ripping the thing down and replacing it with an even bigger one, almost double the size. The fish are super, super healthy. The corals look healthy. It's really, this is one video you really want to watch. We do a lot of videos here at Fragbox, but this is one that's really going to stand out and I hope you enjoy. Let's go along for the ride and thank you for tuning in to today's episode of Fragbox TV. I just asked him, do you have a tank at home? <laughs> that is quite the mixing station. <laughs> what is going on? Uh, if you don't know the video, eight minutes worth of That's exactly how those are supposed to look. The utter chaos, everything is like, if you were to type in Google utter chaos, that's the photo you're gonna get. What is going on my reefing fam? March here, Fragbox TV. This is quite the tank. Um, this is gonna be a really good video. Amazing stuff in here. We'll do a full walk through a tour. There is a lot, a lot, a lot to cover. This tank actually is gonna be coming down. When's it coming down? A uh, couple months. A couple months. It's going to get replaced because it's not big enough with a even larger one. So this one measures eight. Eight. Eight feet across. By three deep. Three deep and looks and two two feet high. And the new one is going to be ten. ten by four by two. Ten by four by two. It's getting an extra two feet this way, an extra foot this way, and about the same height. Yeah. It's gonna. It's. I guess you're full. You need more space. You got it. Yeah. So I always never enough. never enough. I always tell people if you're gonna set up a tank, go as big as you can possibly afford to go. If there's a wall there, go as close as you want to go because then in the future, if you, you don't end up thinking, damn, I should have gone bigger because you've gone as big as you could possibly go. Um, how old is this thing? Uh, three years old. Three years. Four? Wow. Look, really, really mature. I'll start with the corals and then we'll get into the hardware. It uh, looks like he's running some Neptune Sky. Okay, let's stay on track. We'll do, we'll start with coral and then we'll move our way. Did you add all these rock flowers or did they reproduce? I added them. There's uh, around 25 of them in there. Oh, wow. The a few of them decided to go where they wanted, so that's why they're spread out all over the place. But you got lucky because a lot of times they'll kind of go and hide in the rock and you don't even get to enjoy them. No, they look good. This is a true mixed reef. You got everything in here. Acro, LPS, hammers, acanthophilias, acans, zoas, lapastrias, scolies, montipora, zoanthids, elegans, conipora. If there's a coral, you got it. It's yeah, all here. I'm trying to cover uh, all the bases. Wow. Do you have any trick to getting a uh, an Achilles tang without ick? That's very rare. That's uh, unfortunately lucky number eight. Aha! If you're watching this and you've ever thought about trying one of these fish, one well now they're hard to find, but this is not an easy fish to keep. Took you eight eight shots, huh? Yeah. How many how many tries did it take for that white tang that keeps swimming by? <laughs> Just that guy was a one and only one shot deal. Does he have a name? Uh, no, none of them do. I saw. Actually. You know what? Sometimes it's better without the name. You get attached to them, you give them a name, and then that's when they, they kick the bucket. All, all that them. guy there, yeah. uh, the gem tang, uh, so uh, like many reefers, we start small and work our way up. That guy there is probably around six years old. Wow. I've had him for six years. So there was another tank before this? Uh, two other ones, actually. Yeah. So you're going to be on number four. Look at this Bourbon Antheus. Just as fat as can be, loving life. He's not shy, huh? No, they're all pretty uh, out in the boat all the time. What are you feeding these things? They're huge. This is a beautiful I fish. mix everything. I do pea, mysis, um, some pellets. Frozen? Uh, bit of frozen, is, yeah. Is that fridge just for fish food? No. Oh. <laughs> not fish food. A little bit of everything. This is what we feed here in the uh, back of the shop. Great stuff. Yeah, but they look super, super healthy. What are you using for salt? 
The Fauna Marin. Fauna Marin, something we just started carrying in the store recently. You like it? Uh, yes, I do. I've noticed uh, a lot more pop. Um, Are the coral? The corals. Yeah. Yeah. They look great. Like your color is is fantastic. Is this orange passion? Yes. Just perfect. These started from frags. These pieces. Some of them were mil uh, mini colonies, and some were frags. Like uh, so, the rainbow slice there. There's actually two pieces. Wow. The one you're looking at, and then another one. That guy started about an inch and a half, mm -hmm. and that's about a year and a half worth of growth between the two pieces. Refraft. Yes. Yeah. There's no more refraft. Apparently. Did you hear? Yeah. No more refraft. I'm behind me is Carl. I'm, I'm <laughs> you, if you don't know the video, I will link in the description. It's the best performing video we did actually of 2022. Amazing, amazing reef tank um, in his basement. So Carl, you help plumb this? Yeah, with some of the plumbing with Danny and stuff like that. You know, anything major like Yeah, changes. Carl's the guy. Carl helps out uh, on all the new gadgets that I buy. Yeah. Do you have a favorite uh, piece in here, like a, a favorite coral? This uh, pink milly, um, I really like. Yeah, that's just a perfect, perfect example. That of guy started off at a three, four inch mini colony, and that is eight months worth of growth. Wow. So you're getting very good growth. Crazy, crazy amount. Yeah. And so I guess you got to be dosing on a tank like this. I do. Calcium, elk, magnesium, trace uh, elements. Uh, so I do uh, Kalkwasser, about uh, 10,000 uh, mils a day. Wow. Uh, calcium reactor, and then I feed with the uh, Fauna Marin uh, colors and some other stuff we can look at after. Look at the size of this thing. Everything is just super, super healthy. Like, that's exactly how those are supposed to look. The utter chaos, everything is like, if you were to type in Google utter chaos, that's the photo you're going to get. Just perfect. And no algae, I guess lots of tangs, right? Yeah. You keep the copper band for the, uh, just in case any aptasia. So I had a little bit of an aptasia issue, I added him. Um, and now I noticed that he's picking at the acans. That's what they do. Yeah, son which of... Which is a real bugger. Son of a gun. I know, because it's such a beautiful fish. Are you going to keep it? I'm debating to get rid of him on the next tank. What's go? I'll take him off your hands. <laughs> yeah, no problem. He's trained already. Give me, give me a net. <laughs> He's trained already. Um, what's going on here with this, with this chalice? That Raja Rampage. Oh, yeah. uh, I got him about a month ago, and uh, I don't know if he just doesn't like that spot. He came in not a hundred percent, and I noticed that the other day. So he's definitely got to get fragged and moved. I just lost mine. Colony that size. Really? It did the same thing. It peeled from the from the middle out. So give me your uh, expert advice here. What do we do? What did you? Yeah, I, I left it. I, I thought maybe if I just let it chill, it'll stop, but it didn't stop. Yeah. yeah. You could try cutting it, doing an iodine dip. Hope for the best. Yeah. Yeah, just remarkable. You, who did the rock work? I did. It's perfect, man. Yeah. So natural looking lots of caves lots of flat spaces it, it took weeks to figure this out it wasn't just a one and done it, it was a lot of um trial and error yeah who how do you keep the back so clean scrape it uh, once a month it's just a razor blade that's actually dirty right now wow how do you I prefer to be uh black black you hear that that is dirty looks clean to me how do you get in there you got a ladder or something yeah yeah just a ladder and a little two foot scraper there this thing's amazing. Okay, let's talk about the lights. What are you using here? So I got uh, four Neptune skies. Yes. Uh, what I do is I have more whites uh, for the first part of the day. Yep. Uh, second half of the day, I use uh, more of the blue spectrum. They run about 10 hours a day, including ramp up, ramp down about a half an hour, 45 minutes each way. Um, and a half an hour before the uh, skies turn on. I have these two light bars. What are these? These are reef brights. That's a reef bright, and the other ones are Orfix. XHO and then Orfix. I haven't. Orfix blue. I haven't seen these set up on anyone's tank. I like what you did with. Uh, very creative with hanging. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. Thank you. you know, it's like very nice presentation. Uh, Try to keep it a little bit cleaner. I don't want to put a hood type style in here. No. I wanted to keep it more open and. Uh, so yeah, that was. What we're using before, because the Neptunes are pretty new. Uh, Radions. Radions. Yeah. And how do you like these compared to the Radions? I love them. 
uh, just because of what's happening inside the tank. Everything is doing you hear that? super great. He loves them. I do. Yeah, I'm always preaching on the channel. They're great lights. Yeah. Awesome lights. I just well, wish. Here's the. Uh, here's what happens when you use them. The proof's in the pudding. He's using four of them. Yeah, absolutely amazing. How about the um, the sump? What's going on under the skirt here? This little sump. Those just pop off, huh? Yep. Oh, wow. Uh, that is a skimmer. We're looking at the NIOS 220. That's the biggest one. Is it a 300? I'm not even too sure. Oh, maybe. That's the biggest one. It's the biggest, the biggest one. one. I think yeah. it's the 220. <coughs> it's big. So, what's good? It looks pretty simple down here. Uh, yeah, down here, and then there's also uh, a pump that feeds uh, upstairs in the back. We have some more stuff uh, in the back. Full apex. I see yep. some probes over here. Floss. That's so awesome. The two sets of, uh, of um, uh, mechanical filtration, the floss, and then this uh, pinky floss, which I really like. And how come no socks? And how come I'm using floss? I'd rather just throw them away. I'm on the same, the same boat. I do not want to wash garbage yeah filled socks it's yeah it's just much easier and then you hit it twice you got it how come just to get it super honestly that pinky floss picks up everything else oh it's different okay pinky yeah. floss what is this i've never seen this it's got uh i got a bag on the back i can show you look at this it, guys uh, it really really like, takes it to the next level of taking off the very fine stuff mm -hmm. Which I like. I like that you have power heads in the sump. I do the same just to keep all the crud moving, right? You got it. Yeah, you don't want it to settle. And then in the back, some support racks. Yep. You guys don't know what that is. It's um, basically an old school version of this. Everyone uses the Marine Pier. This is what we use back in the day. That's a very common thing to do. Fill up an egg crate kind of homemade DIY thing full of support racks. But lots of biological filtration. It's good for, really good for nitrates. Yeah, what are your really nitrates at in here? Uh, three? Three, pretty low. And phosphates? Uh, zero seven. Zero seven, okay. Calcium, elk, magnesium? Mag is 1350. Uh, elk is around nine. And uh, calcium around 430. Okay, so within reasonable, kind of close to natural seawater. Yes. Yeah, and it seems to be working for you. Everyone asks what we keep ours at. I think it's less important what it's at, and just keep it stable. Just, just don't let it move. And then looks like a NIOS reactor full of what? Carbon? Carbon. There's actually a little bit of roll floss in there as well. Okay. I kind of mix it together. Uh, then there's an abyss for a 200 right there that's feeding a, a back sump. Nice. And then there's the abyss A400 that's uh, used for uh, the return. Serious, serious pumps. If you don't know what these are, they're made in Germany. Shout out to Abyss, they come with a 10 year warranty. If you register them. Within <laughs> a very short window. <laughs> Without a sh within a short window, but uh, they're very powerful, very, very high quality pumps. And he's using the best auto top off, in my opinion, here on the tank. That's the one I always recommend. This is an old one, it says 5017, yeah, I think. that's gotta be at least six years old. Yeah, and it's still running, huh? Still good, no, yeah. no issues. Yep, they're, they're great. I just changed one after maybe 11 years. They're, they're excellent, excellent ATOs. And then this is your um, calcium reactor? Calcium reactor, yeah. Okay. Calcium reactor and calc washer. Correct. To keep up, I guess, with the demands of the tank. Yeah. And, and one other thing that I really, uh, that I put in about four months ago was the uh, scrubber media, the CO2 scrubber media that's hooked up to the, the skimmer. For the pH? It uh, brings up the pH. I'm hovering around uh, 8.4 mm -hmm. with the pH. The media lasts a really long time um that's gotta be this the original four months in okay yeah is it color changing yes okay so it's uh, still got it's lots of color. life nice yeah. um using heaters in here you just keep the, the room there temperature two heaters in there yeah right uh, in that section there there's two of them uh, that uh, have their own uh, built-in thermostats not controlled by the apex just because of the um, the wattage mm -hmm. that uh, the EBA will be able to handle the output on these uh, heaters. What are your opinions on this Mastertronic? I know you I know you hated it. I'll tell you something. I hated it because you know the passion. But you know what? Now? Recently, if you send an email to Mastertronic, no, they respond right away. What? It's not like before. Do it would be weeks. Now, right away, they're on it. Right do you, and think, they fix it right do you think our video had something to do with it? When I we, think so. When we were shitting on them? I think so, right? But honestly, now, I would say buy it. 
Okay, he's changed his opinion. You're gonna see it because I go back and watch the video. He was very adamant that this thing was a piece of. No, yeah. it was good. It was the service. They was the did problem. a new. Yeah, they did a new update too. Oh my God, it's way more accurate. Oh. I just noticed these are not MP40s. MP60s. These are MP. These are the real deal. As big as they get, and there's one, two, three, four. Four, but it's really nice because you don't. They don't take away from the aesthetic, like at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is something you don't see very often anymore. These up here, sea swirls. Sea swirls. This is a very. Yeah, live without those. Man. Yeah, this is a very old school way of reefing, but they're great, mm -hmm. and it basically just turns the return every. It goes back and forth. One eighty. Yeah, one eighty. But the one in the middle, the wavy sea, you can do three sixty. Yeah. They don't sell those anymore. No. You, you don't. You don't the, see them anymore. The center one there. No. So I have two of the uh, sea swirls on both sides. The new tank will have four. Wow. We'll buy them dead or alive if they have any wavy sea that's failed, <laughs> right? I can fix them. So. <laughs> Comment below. Is this guy nuts for taking down this tank? This is all <laughs> coming down. You want to show the uh, the back room of, of how you're going to cut it out? Yeah, yeah we can yeah. go through that. I'll show you. Yeah, the acros are just fire. It looks like some rainbow loom. Maybe some organ tort, sunset millie, setosa. This is actually quite a rare Montipora. We don't see it too often. I've never had luck growing it. You should, if you see it for sale at Fragbox, it's because someone traded it in. Some Walt Disney. He's growing kind of funky. Does it give me the middle finger? <laughs> what is that? That's because of the floor of the sea swirl. Oh, you maybe. Take the branches are on. Some Bali Slimer over here. Probably the easiest, fastest growing acro if you ever want to get into it or try some. I like what you've done with like, you showcase pieces. You know, he's kind of jutting out and he's on his own. You really, it doesn't take away from that. Or that you've done it's a really nice before, job. Thank you. Yeah. That was bigger before, no? It was. I, I chopped it yeah, up. Yeah, it was bigger before. It's like it a soccer ball. It's really big. Perfect yeah. clam here. It looks like Crocia or Maxima. 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 Yeah. Happy on the sand bed. It's looking great. And then the sand is just littered with ultra acanthophilias. One, yeah. two. The little with a white tang there. Yeah, nice shot. Don't move for a second, buddy. How long have you had them? Uh, Three years. You know what? The only thing with him is if he has ick, you can't see it. Nobody's got ick in here. <laughs> we don't use that word here. Nobody's got ick in do here. Do you do? Do you add any new fish? Is there a quarantine procedure here for adding new things? Um. So I don't plan on adding any new fish. But yes, I did do the quarantine process, especially for the white tang, who's a very expensive fish, mm -hmm. and uh, obviously the Achilles, which is the ick magnet. Ick magnet, yeah. I think I tried maybe a dozen times and I said that's it. I'm just killing fish. It's, it's not for me. Yeah. He's running a UV too, right? I also have a UV. I have a 90 watt, uh, what is it, lifeguard? Lifeguard, yeah. yeah. That's a big UV. Really works, man, that thing. I can't get over these rock flowers. They're just perfect and they're huge. Like, typically when we get them in, they're a fraction of the size, maybe the size of a golf yeah. ball. These are, these are like apples. There. Looks like a pink matrix, something similar to that. It's this refraff twizzler. A lot, a lot of refraff pieces in here. It's a mix of a uh, bit of everything, yeah. Mm-hmm. This is incredible. Very natural the way it's growing. That's almost how you'd expect to see it um, in the ocean. The way they table. So nice to see like full-grown colonies. Just perfection. The way you've mixed the colors too, like a little bit of green there, a little bit of green, green, purple, it all kind of blends together. It's hard because you got uh, different species that want to be beside each other that don't want to and you try to mix up uh, you know, the purples and the reds and the greens and the yellows to kind of make everything pop a little bit more. It this doesn't always work out, but... You see the size of that gem type of fatty is, buddy? Yeah. Yeah, we got to send him to Jenny Craig. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna put him on a diet, some keto. What and are this they? Guy too. Look at him. What are they feeding you, man? Look at this he one. He is one. wide. Yeah. Look at this one. It's like a little whale. It's not the convict. What's that one again? That one's a uh, zebra tank. Zebra tank. Look at the size of his stomach and stuff. <laughs> you could eat it. He's got meat on him. Yeah. But his color is not bad too either. You see the man? He's the tank boss, the zebra tank. He likes going around, even though the Achilles is a bit bigger and they're known to be more aggressive. The zebra tank is the, uh, he's the bully of the tank. Just to let him know. 
Do you? I really like this Ross Yellow Chorus. Mm -hmm. Very good for pest control. And there's also a six line uh, in there somewhere. And they don't fight, huh? No. You know six lines are already marsh, right? Like that's the worst fish. I overfeed. Oh, okay. Big time. So maybe they don't fight as much. Yeah. I and try to keep everybody fat and uh, I feed three times a day. So talk to me about how this move or change is going to happen. You're going to... You got to get the tank in we're here. We're going to build a 10 footer at the back, right? Yeah. Then we're going to use the sump for the 10 footer. We're basically going to plumb. You stand over there. Explain to us. Okay. Basically what's going to happen is we're going to put the 10 footer in the back. Mm -hmm. We're going to plumb it with the new sump and we're going to tie this into the new sump, let it run. Whenever so it does this water is gonna, changes. This is going to come offline? No, it's going to be online still. So it's going to hook into the new sump okay. and keep running. We're going to get rid of the old sump first. Got Essentially it. they're going to be two tanks merging running together. together. Got it. So when the water changes from this, we're going to put in the new tank, right? Keep agitating it. Once it's filled with RO as well as with the water from water changes here, okay. we'll balance the cylinder and then we'll merge the two together. So this tank is going to come out and that one will go in its place or it's going to no, be... behind. Okay, it's going to go on the other side and you're going to yeah. cut the wall open? Yeah. I got it. So it's not really a shutdown, it's more of like you're moving it over. Yeah, but it's going to have to take everything, but it's going to be running for like, you know, a month, two months before he does the big move. He's got the new rock, he says, in the back. Yeah, yeah. we don't want to do a uh, reset. I mean, everything in here, I'm confident that, you know, there's not a lot of pests. It's impossible to be pest-free, mm -hmm. but everything's clean. Yeah. yeah. So, you that's the idea, is to get the other one started for a month or two, get all the bacteria growing on the rock so it's not a complete reset. System. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how many gallons will the new one be? It's 600. 600, yeah. It's a nice upgrade. Are you going to use the Neptune skies again? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to add uh, four more. Wow, lots of light. Yeah. How do you... Oh. Because yeah. of the depth. I was going to ask you an electrical question, but it's pretty, it's pretty redundant. <laughs> He's an electrician. I was, I was going to ask, you're going to run new lines, you're independent, because now you're starting to take up... Yeah, there's a lot of wattage there. There's going to be yeah, some added uh, receptacles and stuff. All on their own 20 amp breakers yes. going to the panel, yeah. yeah. So when you get into tanks this size, you gotta start, well, here it doesn't have to think about weight because we're sit standing on concrete. Correct. Something like this in a house would be, you'd have to reinforce the floor. There's a lot of considerations. And then electrical too. Floor, yeah. How do you water change this son of a gun? So with this tank, we were filling up uh, the 32 gallon blue containers. Wheeling uh, them in? And I would do four, four actually, Greg, Aqualux, shout out to Greg. Aqualux. Does a, a great job, he's yep. uh, the guy that does a maintenance here once a week. So we fill up, uh, we fill up uh, four of those, and I had a big container system set up in the back, which we'll go and see, um, that was plumbed with uh, a valve, and it would just automatically fill up. There's a valve under here that I would just turn, and it would empty from the reservoir in the back and fill up the tank through uh, this one inch pipe here. Okay, so it doesn't sound like too much work. Yeah, try to keep it uh, easy. The new one though Maybe will it's... have a valve on the sump, so you just let it go to the floor drain. Perfect. Right back to the city. Exactly. Oh, I can't wait to see these chalices grow out here. Looks like you have a decent cleanup crew too. I'm seeing lots of hermits, snails, Nasarius. Nasarius, um, Trochus, uh, a couple uh, turbos. It's not a drop of like n no algae in sight. Thing is just pristine. Okay, behind the scenes. So this is where the new tank is gonna go. You got it. So now there's a whole new process that's gotta get done. I wanna get the floor done, epoxy floor for any water damage because you probably tell the floor's in rough shape. Mm -hmm. What was um, this room? So I had racking here in the past and uh, there was another sump that used to be on this rack here with the um, algae scrubber. Mm. Algae scrubber, the UV light is there, calc washer, which we all got temporarily moved to the top. That's my uh, ROTI uh, top of water there. Radions used to be here. Sorry? Your radions. Used to be, yeah, in the back tank here. Now everything got removed to get ready for the uh, new tank. Why is that doser so high up? That's where it was, and now it's using, that's dosing the uh, kelp washer. Oh, okay. It was there before, and honestly, it's out of the way. So the new tank is going to start roughly here. 
This is the back side of the office, so the other side is where the tank is now. Uh, so the new tank will start here, it will go six inches before that block wall. Wow. And then this is going to come out, I guess you're going to cut it out? We're going to have to yeah, take all that out, reframe. The stand here? Stand there, sump underneath the stand. Cool. So now we're it's a big project. You just open the sump now. You just got to make sure you don't forget to turn it off. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Could drain the pipe. You can have a lot of water, but a lot of you no. know, very high velocity. Yeah. But even if you do have an incident, you know it's. Well, the floor is naturally smoked through that drain. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So if anything were to happen, um, the drain will pick it up. This is your insurance. It's gonna have probably a quarantine tank here, right? You got it. Got ready for the ice storm. Yeah. yeah, that's a very good investment. We have some customers that have. Um, Standby generators, they've done their entire home with 20, 25 kilowatts. But if. And those crazy fish guys buy generators just for the tanks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't yeah. even care about the heat of the house. Yeah. <laughs> forget, forget the wife and kids and, and the thing. We, we need to protect the fish. Yeah, yeah. fish and coral. What does yeah. it cost to put something like that in the house? 25, 30,000? Depends the size, but yeah, you're looking at about that. Yeah, but if you have. You, have you ever calculated what you have invested into that thing? No. I don't want to. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't, don't count. It might change his mind about the 10 footer. <laughs> wives, you can turn the video, if any wives are watching this, you turn off the video now. Uh, water mixing station over here. This used to be there. Are you a Porsche fan or you just have that sweater? No, I'm a Porsche oh, fan, a Porsche driver. Porsche man. You take that off video. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is quite the mixing station. Yeah, so the top uh, is filled with uh, RODI water, but again, this is just here temporarily. This is usually on the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, fill up RODI in the top, mixing station uh, at the bottom, where the salt gets mixed. Carl, what kind of pump is this? A Jabao. A Jabao SOW20. Well, no, no, that's just to keep it on. This thing's seen better days. But the actual I walk at 100. Oh, this is pretty old school. To mix the salt. That is... Japanese. Uh, yeah. Domi Oregato, great pumps. We wish we could use it for the new tank, but it vibrates too much, buddy. Too much noise? Oh man, if you hear the vibration, that's exactly And it causes a lot of heat, yes. to be quite honest with you. So uh, it does warm up the water, so yeah. they a good hour, hour and a half of mixing with this guy on. The, the, the salt water is all mixed up, and I just keep that little uh, j bolt pump running to kind of just keep the water agitated. How many gallons inside one of these? 250. Nice. 275. It's a good amount of water to have on hand. Yeah. Like this gets the job done. Six by six. Yeah, six, by six Perfect. Yeah, With this, look, we found something in the back. Clara C. Filter. I used to use them. And now? Not anymore. Wow. Most people are moving towards filter floss rollers. You've done the opposite. I got two of them for sale. Used one. So anyone <laughs> wants them? If anyone, <laughs> you guys hear that? This has turned into a Kijiji sales channel. If you're looking for Clara C. Message us. Send me an email. Oh, what else you got back here for sale? I see it. It's a DC pump up there. Man, this is a Look at that pot. Stuff. Neptune stuff. Yeah. Just yeah. Neptune. I wonder what's this in there. This is not for sale though, the chiller. Okay? We're keeping it for the other time. You're going to use it, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's brand new. We have to put it in this here. If you don't know what a chiller is, sometimes when a tank gets so large, you need to actually cool down the water. This is back in the day, you just bought a chiller. That was a normal part of keeping a reef tank. Yeah. You ran halides, you heated it up. Oh, you needed a chiller. 100%. You needed a chiller. No, no now it's very so rare. Much, yeah. Yep. Well, because we're running. We switched from Tropic to Fauna. It's part of the reason why we, we don't sell this salt in the store. They did a recall on the salt. It's bad batches. And I don't know if anyone's using it since then. I guess some people must be. But if you had one made in Turkey, it got recalled. Check the label on your bucket. Up with the light on it. Sumps everywhere. So this sump here was set up on the rack on the back. Um, so what's its purpose now? rack and radions. Okay. Now, well, I had to feed the, uh, what is this thing? The Thirsty Algae Scrubber 3. Okay, Reefing Fam, that's it. We're gonna wrap up today's episode. If you got any questions about this tank, you can um, comment below and I'll try and get an answer from the owner of it or shoot us an email, fragboxcorals at gmail.com. Probably up there with one of the nicest tanks I think here in Toronto, in the city. It's done just a fantastic job and I'm excited to see what he's gonna do with the next one. I can't imagine bigger and better than this one here.
you know, all the high impacts. We're gonna, we'll we're gonna continue to do nice aquariums like this across the city. And that's it, if you like the content, you like the channel, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, there's a little bell down there, you can get notified next time we release one of these. And we'll see you next time on the channel. Have a very nice day or afternoon or maybe even morning, wherever you're watching from, goodbye for now. I just asked him, do you have a tank at home? He goes, kids, cover your ears. He goes, fuck no. <laughs> This is home. Why would you leave? You got the sofa, he's got the Hennessy, the office. This is it. This is the fucking living room right here. Thank you. The bloopers. This has nothing to do with reefing. We just, 98% of our viewers are male, so you might appreciate. We have an OJ Simpson signed helmet, a Messi signed ball, and some serious boxing gloves over here. That is pretty cool. A good Mike Tyson there, wow, signed Tyson, gloves. Yeah. Signed Tyson glove. That's cool. Good man. Wow, this, is a, this is a serious man cave. Look you got it all there. We got uh, the side Sopranos. Uh, I was so distracted with uh, with the tank. I, I didn't even see the class Azul. He's got the uh, yeah. what you call it. Oh, this is a this. You don't see the mezcal. This is a rare bottle to find. A man of good taste. Whiskey and reef tanks. Okay, bye for real.